What's going on, everyone? Tanner Poppet here of Madrost and Poppet's Corner. Just reminding you that our new record, Charring the Rotting Earth, is now available at nolifetomatorecords.com. That's right. Just go on the search bar, type in nolifetomatorecords.com, and support. Again, nolifetomatorecords.com. Now, let's check out the episode you came to see. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Poppet's Corner. Thoroughly excited as always, to be doing these, and of course, got the main man himself, Mr. Shannon Fry from Avenger of Blood, joining me today. Shannon, how you doing, man? I'm good, bro. I'm good. How are you? I'm hanging in there, man. It's been a solid week so far, so looking forward to, to doing this with you tonight. Uh, I don't know if I've ever talked about my kind of, I wouldn't even say dealings, I would just say my kind of interactions with uh, a tv show back in the day and i'm sure you're familiar with it called that metal show right yeah yeah it was now before we get started in in some of my storytellings and whatnot i'm gonna have you give a brief synopsis for people that may not know what we're talking about here so if you can recall what do you recall kind of happening with that metal show and what was it Oh, so a brief description. Correct. Okay. Okay. So there were two comedians. One's name was Don Jameson. The other guy, I don't exactly remember his name offhand. Jim uh, Florentine. Say again? Jim, Jim Florentine. Jim Florentine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. From Crank Anchors. <laughs> um, so, and then there was the radio host out of, out of New Jersey who lives here in Vegas now half the year named Eddie trunk. And they would have, it was filmed in front of a studio audience and they had a girl that would come out and flip the board. They would have different top five albums of this band or top, like we kind of do on occasion, but they would have it and they would choose of which, which album goes where in the ranking. As time would go on, they would have guests, the guests, they would interview the guests. Very, very short interviews. Not really a whole lot of time to talk to them. But it was interesting sometimes, the guests that they would have. And then they would have an, a, a segment called Stump the Trunk where they would ask questions to Eddie about metal and hard rock. And the guy, you know, I mean, as knowledgeable as he is about certain bands, he's not very knowledgeable about metal as a whole. He knows maybe, and I'm not, not picking him on this, picking on him about this, but to me, he knows 10 bands. And aside from that, like, little bits and pieces of other things, but he's not a thrasher. He's not into death metal. He's not into doom, grind, anything that we are into. So it's more um, the, the popular stuff that was on MTV back in the 80s and early 90s. And, and then they would have, I mean, the comedians would also make fun of him in, in the show. And that was kind of interesting because they're good at at ripping on each other. And then, uh, yeah, they, they would ha also have a, a guest guitar player in the crowd or a guest drummer that I've seen. I, I'd never seen a bass player. Maybe I'm wrong. Billy Sheehan, maybe. Okay. But but in a roundabout way, that was, that was the show. Right. And it was like, it was way before podcasts were became popular right it was like 2000 and what 2011 12 era we're right talking, when podcasts you know, were coming on right when podcasts were starting to happen not the right. video podcast but the audio podcast right so it be, meaning that it wasn't it wasn't conveniently you know it wasn't convenient that we had a show dedicated to quote unquote metal music Right, we didn't have a, we didn't have that back then. Right, and we're only talking ten years ago here. So, the show was based out of 
out of Hollywood, California, and I think they would they would do some episodes in New Jersey. I think it started in New Jersey, New York area, and then they would film episodes here. Now, what they would do is, uh, and I, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of pull behind the curtain. You know, they, they did, what, 10 seasons of that thing? Right. And, and what they would do is, so they would film like two episodes at a time. Uh, it would be like, you know, they were like, what, half hour shows and whatnot. And pretty much how I heard about becoming like a, mem- a part of like the studio audience is, is I subscribed to the VH1 Classic was the, the, the station that would air it. And they sent out an email saying, hey, you know, for anyone who wants to be a part of that metal show, we're taping in, in L.A. Here's all the information. Here's the time. Here are the guests for that, you know, for that specific day or whatever. And, and you wouldn't know the guests until like maybe the day of or the day before, whatever it is. But so you so we, we I've been there's I've been to maybe like four five seasons of it. So I, I went on a couple times in the studio audience, right? So it would always be like me and my dad or, or me and, and, and next member of the band at the time and whatnot. So I remember one instance where, so they would do the shows, right? So that you would, they would, they would do the shows, you know, one or two takes or whatever. And that would be it. Uh, it was like a full production. I mean, like, Big old cameras, the the set, the the lights, everything. So, I was always under the impression for the segment called "Stump the Trunk" that you could ask any question you wanted when it came to that segment. I quickly found out that that was not true. So we show up to one of the of the tapings, and I think it was Frankie Benali was was the guy, and I think Glenn Hughes was with him. I, but I know it was Frankie Benali. And uh, and they what they would do is, is they would pick certain people out of the audience. You know, hey, raise your hand if you want to if you want to ask some, you know, Eddie Trunk a question. Okay, I and then I would uh, you know, I raised my hand and I got picked, right? And I was wearing my Dark Angel t-shirt, like a badass. <laughs> Those guys had no idea who the fuck Dark Angel is. I'm just going to pre- preference that now. <laughs> because I remember there a, a different story was me and an ex-member went to a that metal show taping and he was wearing a sarcophago t-shirt none of the guys knew who it was and and they he they specifically pointed out to that to that gentleman's t-shirt and said who the fuck is that and we we looked at each other like these guys are fucking idiots <laughs> that, was, that was that was that was the moment when i was like oh okay this is like not they're not educated enough to have a show like this i would say what what they're pertaining to are like the fifty year old rockers that only remember ten bands from MTV and and VH1 or whatever. actually no I'm mean, preference that MTV only because that's what was popular in the late eighties early nineties so right. they they didn't know that like that station aired other fucking types of music like Sarcophago uh, like Death like Cannibal Corpse right it, they were played on MTV during the eighties and nineties absolutely. Yeah. But those guys didn't know, nor right. do they care. <laughs> you know what I mean? They were more interested in the bands that became quote unquote mainstream. The right. Panteras, the fucking Metallicas, the Megadeths, all that kind of stuff. And then Eddie, Eddie Trunk's two favorite bands, Rush and, and UFO. That was it. And Kiss. And, yeah, and Kiss. Sorry. Sure. Yeah. Whatever. Right? But that didn't pertain to me. Like, I like those bands, but I was happening around that specific time er- period and I'll get back to that metal show the the stump the trunk thing but back in in those during those specific time periods you know we had thrash metal raging at that point i mean you know what you guys were doing that was very popular and that show just did not do that any justice didn't hmm. do any of the bands ju- justice when it came to like new bands and helping actually promote metal as a whole right all they pertained to was like the old guys mm-hmm. and and i just thought that was very like disrespectful to the genre itself like here right. we had this perfect opportunity that we could utilize 
as a whole, but they're only doing it to like mainstream fucking bands and right. bands who already have made it. Right. Bands who don't need the exposure. And let's right. have the same guest on 80 million times. Mm -hmm. right? right. So that was a huge conundrum for me personally watching it going, man, this is like the same old shit. And I think that's why it fucking it met its end. Yeah. Because but, it was but, doing the same shit over and over and over and over again. And and people just lost interest, even though the the quote unquote Eddie Trunk says he's asked every day about that metal show, which I call bullshit. Mm -hmm. total bullshit on. And if, even if that was the case, you could still do it now. You could bring back that, that metal show. If you yeah. want the full production value, that ain't happening. We have right. podcasts now. So that show right. is completely irrelevant when it comes to like, you know, big production. You could do it. You could do that metal show still. Right. But, but then they should do that metal show. You know what I mean? Not that metal and rock show because that's what they made it out to be you know when, when you have uh, have bands like creed that ain't metal when you have rage against the machine sorry that ain't metal either well, when you here, have here's uh, the thing that i have a problem with ufo like, is not metal you, you know what i mean like some of those bands he had on there were not metal bands and it was called that metal show that always like just another jab at reason to to not like it even though i did like it but it was a reason to not like it so which is pertaining to why it helped fail well, in my I, opinion right and, and here's the thing that's the only thing we had at the time mm -hmm. like i didn't i didn't know this other outlet was going to be so popular and meaning like the podcasting realm was going to be so popular. And so where we can, we were able to create our own kind of versions of, of that show to help actually promote metal as a whole. And, and I, I think, you know, here, here's what I had a problem with on that show. They would always claim all things, hard rock and heavy metal. Well, what's part of heavy metal thrash death metal black metal you could say grindcore mm -hmm. i would say so mm -hmm. that was never represented and black they even metal. addressed it well they even addressed it saying we're only the thing is is mtv did not play those videos back in the day which again is another bullshit excuse because they did mm -hmm. they had a thing called headbangers ball where they right. literally played the heaviest music that that they could at that time and a lot of it was thrash and death metal bands during the three-way thrash. Right. And, and you couldn't bring on nuclear right. salt or something like that, like to bring it bake like the monotony to kind of clear up the monotony of having the same big four fucking style bands of, of thrash metal. You know, you couldn't break up the monotony any other way. Right. Right. So it's all like who would they, who were they really pertaining to? Who was this show you know, meant to be watched by. Well, it's meant to be watched oh. by the 50 year old guys again, that like the same 10 bands who mm -hmm. don't ever want to change. And again, that's probably why it failed because there's no room for it to grow and support the new kind of bands coming up. Cause that's, that's, I think the biggest downfall for that show that it's like, what could have been, mm -hmm. what could have been very huge question too pertaining to that show it could have been it could have been and but then again it was on vh1 they were also told what they had to say they were told what to cover it wasn't them that was choosing that that was vh1 that was choosing that and and that's been confirmed by jim florentine and eddie trunk as well Right, right. And I again I'm not putting it past the that right. show because of that reason. I'm just saying it's, that like using that as an excuse is bullshit. Mm -hmm. Because they used to air those videos back in the day. Right. You but know, uh, you know, VH1 is also partially to blame for that. I'm I just want to put that in. Well, right, but the, even on their their own programming, I specifically remember watching, you know, an anomaly video <laughs> meaning like I I would I think I see, I, you know, I would watch a cannibal corpse kind of video on, on, uh, metal on mania. Yeah. On like metal mania. So they would have it. Like mm -hmm. it was clearly there. So 
I, I again, I think they were just using that as like an excuse to not do that, right? Because you have classic death metal bands, just like classic thrash bands, and I think it's because like they didn't want to do it. I right. think the host generally just didn't want to do that. And again, that's when I kind of lost interest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you're going to claim all things hard rock and heavy metal, do it. But don't call it that metal but show. Don't call it that metal show and only do the same fucking 10 bands, right? So, okay. Right. So let's get back to uh, a, a asking the have. question. Yeah, <laughs> asking right? the question on the, on the show. Right. So on, on the episode of, with Frankie Benali, uh, I. I got picked from the audience, right? We're reverting back to this. So get picked from the audience. I go, you know, step down from the, uh, the, the audience or whatever into uh, like another area where like, there's like eight or so people, eight or nine people. And they don't, they don't air every single question asked by the way. So a lot of times they pick and choose what questions are going to be asked. You sign a waiver saying, Hey, you might be chosen. And you, you know, you sign, you know, a way, like the likeness or whatever it is that, that you do just to be on TV. You got to sign a waiver to do that. So I was on the impression like, yeah, like cool. So even bef- before this happened, there was a place where you could write down your question and submit it into like a box before the show happened. Right. So when I get down to this fucking area, they hand me a card and it's like the worst question of all time. It literally is like, the most generic bullshit, like, and I knew I was going to get on uh, TV because of it, because it's like the most softball fucking question. It was who originally wrote and recorded "Come On, Fill the Noise." Oh, Slade, yeah, that's too easy, right? Did right. he get like, it so Fuck no, no. So again, I knew I wasn't going to get a prize or whatever, which beside the point. But it's just <laughs> like, it's just like. Wait, so I don't even get to ask my own question. I have to ask a question that A, the studio gave me, or it's somebody else's question. <laughs> do you know do you know what I mean? Like that seems kind of weird. Yeah. But if again, claiming that Eddie Trunk knows all, I, I uh, firmly believe that he knew the answers before the questions happened now. Now that I've like kind of pulled it back a little bit and, and known that they gave it to me ahead of time. Right? Doesn't that seem kind of weird to you? It's very strange, yeah. Right. Yeah. And I specifically remember too, on one occasion when I, we were in the audience, a lady in front of us, some other lady asked her question, and and after the fucking the the taping was over, that segment was was over, she fucking like threw like a not a rage fit or whatever, but like she was like, hey, like that's bullshit. That was my question, and she got a prize off the air. They gave her a prize wow. because, <laughs> do you know what I mean? They gave her a prize yeah. off off the, you know, because he got it wrong or whatever like that. So I thought that was kind of, you know, a little strange. But again, this is all like behind the curtain, kind of I'm pulling the curtain back a little bit here. But I thought it, it was more than meets the eye. And it just it just wasn't for me personally. Like that show could have been. So like beneficial to new bands because you know we had Warbringer kicking ass then, we had mm-hmm. like, uh, uh, I mean even like like a black again you don't have to like them but like a Black Dollar Murder was kicking ass then bands of that mm-hmm. ilk could have benefited hugely from like a that metal show because we didn't have anything else on regular cable now all mm-hmm. of it's changed uh, I don't think like you could have a that metal show like that anymore, which maybe that's good for good and bad reasons. Maybe it's good, better that it's not there because mm-hmm. we have all this other kind of alternate platforms. So right. yeah, it's, it was just really like a strange environment. And so after the, the show aired and whatnot, and it was a good time. It was just, a, it was, there was just a strange I don't know, a strange thing surrounding it, I, I would say. But the show would end. You would get to meet the guests uh, after the show, shake hands with all the hosts and blah, 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 blah. Right. Like I got to meet Glenn Hughes and Bill Ward and Glenn Danzig and Dave Medichetti, Frankie wow. Benali. Right. I got to meet all of them. They're super nice. 
So that was kind of a, a cool thing out, outside of, you know, just going and sitting in for free in the audience. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that is so, awesome. so yeah, I don't think I've ever told my that metal show experience, but it was, you know, did they it, have they a would, guest guitarist at that time? Yeah. So I there's one time uh, I sat next to Billy Sheehan when he was doing his fucking raging bass. Oh, it ruled. Oh wow. Uh, I didn't ever go there when when there was a drummer. Like I went there when Richie Coxon was playing, and he fucking didn't have a pick. Yeah, and he, yeah, had, yeah. He, he asked me for a pick or whatever, and I didn't, I didn't have one at the time. Like I was like, oh fuck, I forgot to bring my draws picks. Damn. But because he looked at me knowing that I was like a guitar player and whatnot, so but he was really cool. He was really nice, uh, and I think he got a pick. So, and more, that's the end of that story. But you know, it's like a what could have been. I was expecting way more than what I was, than what I saw. Uh-huh. But again, it's like, what can you do? You know, the only thing you can do is is do your own version of it. Uh, but I, I don't think it could be done nowadays because it'd be too expensive. And it's you don't need to have big old camera crews and fucking wardrobes and you don't need any of it anymore. You can literally just do it out of your out of your garage. Right, right. Well, look at uh, out of, between out of two Canada, farms. Out of <laughs> out of Canada, the Banger TV uh, crew. I guess you could call them like they're doing it. Basically what, what that metal show was, except all of it, all of it and more. I mean, good for them. Good for them for taking it on. That That's ballsy. But right. And I like, don't think that metal show, just an hour long, half an hour long metal show could last today. Like you're saying, I don't think it could either. I, I just, I, I don't think that it would, it, it's just, it reaches a point when it's not, it's just not fun to watch anymore because it's the same old shit. Like right. it's not new and exciting. Right. It was only right. like that for until a certain point. So right. the first three up three seasons. And then after it just kind of felt like it was repeating itself over and over and over. Right, I guess same you, guests, yeah. and that's why they kind of mm-hmm. had to expand it to segments and mm-hmm. not have, like, you know, guests of... Again, because the up-and-comers could have benefited, I think, the most from this, not the fucking guys that don't need the exposure. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, they're already covered. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, could have helped us out. Could have helped you out. Warbringer, Ex Mortis, Dark Funeral, shit. Cannibal Corpse, even though they were already big. You know, Again, all those bands. Heathen, Hell Heretic, Hell Star, all of them. There's so much that they didn't cover because they were too focused on the old days. They were too focused on, sure, it's great to have Black Sabbath on. Who wouldn't? Hell. But come on, Creed. Come on, Slash. Come on. Dude, There's the great guest, fucking, I think... I think the most metal guest they ever got on, and it's arguably up for debate, but to me, when they got King Diamond on, that was the most metal guest you could possibly get on that show. Other than that, it was like, that's when it felt like, okay, cool, he's doing something different. He meaning Jim, Don, and, and, and Eddie, but I just don't think they're they're very knowledgeable metal-wise as a whole. I just thought they were like, like they knew some stuff, which is cool. And Jim Florentine plays a lot of killer, like B side stuff that you would never hear elsewhere. But again, mm-hmm. same bands. It's not like anything different than what Eddie Trunk does or whatever. He just plays more of the B sides. Right. But I, I can't think appreciate. Don Jameson could have opened up a little more too, but he kind of stayed. They both kind of done and and and. and <sighs> and Jim and yes. Eddie. Don and Jim could have expanded outside because they could have just let Eddie have his own persona, which is those 10 bands and repeating the old days. But Don and Jim, they they know more of these the newer stuff. And I don't mean slipknot because they come on stage in slipknot shirts or whatever. But I mean they could they could have 
branched out and brought our bands in or the, the black metal and the death metal, even though they may not be totally into it, they're kind of into it, just not as big as, as much well, as some of us are. You know what I mean? They could have branched out and said, hey, when they would hold up, for example, they would hold up towards the end, the last five seasons, I would say, they started holding up albums that they got. Who knows if it was from the label or if, it, if they were supposed to promote those on the show. But the way that it seemed is they picked those albums to show on camera, not the not VH1 Classic said that this is what you have to show. So when they were showing, look, I got the new Anthrax. Look, I got the new whatever, whatever. Like they could have, they could have opened that up, and I think it would have. That's when it would have really helped the, the lesser known bands, such as us and Warbringer and you guys and whoever, you know. Sure, but another another thing about that show is, is it was taped well in advance. So like by the time it aired, it was already like kind of old news. Mm -hmm. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Right. But old news is still news. You know what I True. mean? When it comes to us lesser known bands, that's anything is good. But dude, when you're picking like the top like five greatest like thrash albums and you you're all of them are like the 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 big four, like really? You know, yeah, you know there are other bands they that choose. they don't know anything else. I mean, you know there are other bands outside of the big four that exist in thrash metal, right? You know, like Dark Angel exists, right? Violence. Right. Sodom. Death Creator Angel. Violence. Oh, yeah, you know, it's so not just many. like the big four and Exodus and Overkill and mm -hmm. Testament. That's like all they would, would list. So mm -hmm. those are my gripes about it. It was, it is, it was what it was during a time when I guess we needed to have something, but... All in all, I'm glad we have what we have now so we can keep promoting the new style bands. But I just wanted to do it like a short little run here today and just talk, tell some stories about uh, uh, a little show that could that, again, I guess we're still talking about it. So it left some sort of impact with us. But Right. Good and <laughs> so, bad impressions both. Sure. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm not trying to knock it all. There's some oh, no. great aspects for it, but... It, it again it is what it is so right, right but yeah for another for another episode of poppers corner guys we're out of here cheers <laughs>